Hey guys, this is Joe Manalone, and today we're going to be taking a look at Emmet, formerly known as Zen Coding. Uh, Emmet is, uh, gosh, it's almost hard to explain. It's a, it's a web developer's toolkit for generating HTML. Uh, it's a lot more than that. You can also do a lot of CSS, and then there's a, a part of it that's called Actions. Uh, and we're going to take a look first at the HTML generation, and I think this is going to get broken into a couple videos because there's a lot to cover. Uh, one thing to point out is I am working in Sublime Text Editor here, but at some point I'm going to end up switching over to Brackets by Adobe. And the reason for that is uh, when we get to talking about actions, uh, they are implemented very differently in different text editors. Uh, so there's some that Brackets has implemented that Sublime Text Editor has not. So over the course of this video, and like I said, you know, maybe one or two more to kind of flush everything out. Uh, the idea is to get you to understand this string that you're looking at right now. So this is Emmet, and what it's going to do in just a second is really cool. Uh, in Emmet, you type out what you want, and then the first action that's universally implemented is tab. I'm going to hit my tab key right here at the end of this string, and it's going to generate this entire page of HTML for me. Uh, and if you look, there's a lot of bits and pieces that are happening here that are pretty cool. Uh, one thing is that you can see this is incrementing 1, 2, and 3. This is decrementing 6, 5, and 4. Uh, down here we generate some h1, h2, and h3 tags. Uh, these classes are copy 1, copy 2, copy 3. And uh, we've got some lorem ipsum going on. And if I jump back to my original string, uh, you know, for example, I'm using this dollar sign to generate the uh, uh, h, the heading tags that I was using. Uh, we've got different types of uh, see, we've got siblings here, we've got some grouping going on, we've got the decrementing here, uh, we've got lots of stuff going on. Uh, we're going to start nice and simple, but this is kind of the goal for, uh, for you to be able to look at the string and understand what's happening here. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, Emmet allows you to generate HTML tags. I want a paragraph tag, I hit P, which is the abbreviation for paragraph tag in this case, or it's, I mean it is the tag. Uh, I hit tab and I've got that tag. Uh, likewise, if I wanted a list item, if I wanted an H1, just, just type out the tag you need. In addition to that, if you were working in something that had, uh, you know, like Angular, we've got uh, custom elements. Just tab that out. Whoops, tab. Why isn't that working? Let's try that one more time. My directive. Well, let's just say foo. Now, see, now, again, this is an implementation issue, so I'm jumping over here to brackets, and I type foo and tab, and it completes it for me. So, uh, that's why we're going to be working in different editors. Uh, so, again, my directive, tab, and it completed that, you know, in standard HTML style. So, again, different implementations and different text editors. We're going to stick with Sublime uh, for the, the rest of this right now. So, uh, with Sublime, of course, it wants an actual tag. So, good, we're going to give it an actual tag. Now, Emmet uses CSS selectors, uh, uh, a CSS style of syntax. So if you're familiar with CSS, this is going to look very familiar to you. Uh, if I want to give this paragraph tag a class of, let's say, red, just tab that out. Now it's got a class of red. I can also string together classes. So let's say it's a class of red and bold. Now it's got a class of red and bold. Uh, so that's the dot syntax to get the class into your element. Uh, to get the ID, we're going to use the hashtag or the pound symbol. I pass in the ID, and now I've got an ID of the ID. Uh, if we want to do attributes, that's going to happen in regular brackets. So let's say this is going to have a title of the title. Tab that out, and now we've got our class, our ID, and our title attribute in this case. And then finally, if we want inner content for that, uh, that happens in curly brackets. So inner content, okay. So now we've got inner content, we've got attributes, the class, the ID, all that good stuff. Great. Um, this string is going to get a little complicated, so, so I hope you're sticking with me here. Uh, now we can use, let's do this multiplication, uh, or this multiplier here. What I'm basically saying is I want to do whatever's before this five times. So let's, there we go. We've got five of those. Uh, and we can see one issue here is we've got this VID each time on these. We don't want that. Uh, so what we can use is this dollar symbol uh, functionality, I guess we'll call it. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to increment from one to however many times we're going to do this thing. So now we've got the ID 1, the ID 2, 3, 4, 5. Awesome. Uh, we can also pad that number. So if I wanted two leading zeros, uh, what I'm going to get is the ID 
001 through 005. Uh, another cool thing we can do is we can say where we want this to start. We can use the at symbol saying we're starting at, let's say I want to start at five. So it's going to go five times. So we've got ID five through nine. Uh, another thing we can do there is we can say we want to reverse that order. So we're going to start at minus five. And what we're going to get there is nine through five rather than five through nine. Uh, okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's talk about uh, traversing the DOM, I guess. So siblings, descendants, and so forth. Uh, so let's clear this out. And let's start pretty simple. So uh, let's say we've got a div with a class of one. So there's our div. And then we inside that div, we want to have an H1 tag. So we're using this greater than symbol uh, or the, the uh, child selector, descendant selector, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to place that right in there. And on each one of these, we could do whatever we want. So, if, you know, the content in that one. Uh, now it's, you know, it's got the content in there. And we can apply all the things that we just looked at previously to each of these elements. Uh, if I wanted this to be a sibling, so the div, and then, you know, after the div closes, then the h1 tag, I use the plus symbol here, tab that out, and now we've got those two uh, separate. You know, they're siblings. Uh, the h1 does not live inside of the div. Okay, so now let's look at uh, another example. I don't think a lot of people use this, but let's say we've got a div here with a class of two, and you know what? So here in the one, we're going to do an h1, and then the one with the class of two, we're going to do an h2. Now, uh, let's just take a look at what this is going to do. The div with the class of one is the parent to everything, and uh, everything lives inside of that. You know, the, the div with the class of two does have its descendant of the h2, but everything is living inside of the div with the class of one. Uh, if we wanted these two divs to be uh, siblings, uh, what we could do is we can use this climb up selector. So this selector right here, and let's take a look at what that's going to do. Now we've got this div with the class of one, and it's h1, and we've got this div with the class of two, and it's h2. So let's take a look at that really quick one more time. What happened when we were trying to do them together is that the h1 and the div with the class of two became siblings. Uh, so here's the h1. Here's the div with the class of two. Uh, and what we did is we had that jump up the DOM basically and become a sibling to the div with the class of one. So uh, that's a little tricky. There's actually another way we can do this. And uh, that's the next thing I wanna talk about is grouping. So I can take this section here and then I can make it a sibling of this section here. And I'm grouping that with parentheses. So we get the exact same result uh, it's just a different way and I think this one actually ends up making a lot more sense and you can see uh, over here I was using it quite a bit grouping various things so you can have you know subgroupings and so forth uh, okay so that's you know siblings descendants climbing up and grouping uh, the next thing to talk about is that uh, Emmett's really smart uh, here we are in an HTML document and if I just type dot item and tab that out uh, it infers or assumes or whatever that the uh, the item is a div. It just it just does that uh, based on the fact that the div is the most widely used element in HTML. Uh, it's also smart in that uh, let's say I've got a UL, so I tab that out to get the unordered list, and then let's say it has a descendant of list item. Okay, and I didn't pass in the list item tag. I just gave it a class. It's smart enough to know that uh, you know the the next thing is going to be a list item. Same thing with uh, say a table. Uh, if I do table dot row, you know, give it a class of row without passing in the table row dialog or uh, tag. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, there's some other shortcuts here that I don't think a lot of people know about. So table plus will actually generate the row and the first column for us. And the same goes for ULs plus, uh, let's see, OL plus is obviously going to work, uh, definition list, whoop, definition list plus, and that's an interesting one because it gives us two inner tags, or two descendants, the uh, title and the definition tags. Uh, there's some other interesting ones when I do an anchor, it, it automatically knows, you know, I want an href, hey, that's awesome. Uh, and then starting from the very, very beginning, uh, I can come up here and just hit dollar sign. And if we look at what I was doing over here in the beginning, I've got this dollar sign right there. Uh, and what that does is it generates, you know, the, the framework for an HTML document all by itself. If you can't see, or let me just show you that one more time, just a dollar sign tab, 
We've got an entire HTML5 document in this case, and that's because HTML5 is the default. Uh, so technically, dollar sign is really a shortcut for this right here, HTML colon five. Tab that out. If I wanted uh, XHTML strict, the abbreviation for that is XS. Tab that out. Now we've got that. If I want a transitional, tab that out, and now we've got that. Uh, let's jump back to an HTML5 doc. And uh, there's some other ones here. I can't cover every possible abbreviation, but just to show you really quick, if I want a link, it's going to be CSS. Drop that in right there. If I want a script tag, I type that. But if I, if I'm going to be doing, you know, an external source on that, uh, you can see I just did script source, and you know, I'm ready to go. Uh, <clears throat> so I think that covers the HTML portion of this. We're going to take a look at CSS, and then we're going to take a look at some of the more advanced actions afterwards. Uh, but for right now, I think that's a lot of ground to cover. Uh, I hope you guys followed along. Feel free to jump back and pause. I should probably include some examples for this. Uh, I'll try to get that done. Uh, but anyway, so that's Emmet uh, HTML. And next time we're going to look at CSS. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.